Okay, we're here with Olympic athlete Thea Lafour. Thea Lafour is going to be representing Dominica in the triple jump event at the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. That event is carded for Friday. Thea, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. I'm actually feeling surprisingly calm about this, um, but I feel prepared. I'm excited to go out there. I've had to wait an extra year due to COVID. I mean, we all have. And uh, I'm just excited to go and represent Dominica well. Mm -hmm. Thea, give me an idea as to how prepared you are for this event. I've had the best year of my life in triple jump. I ranked top 10 in the world. Um, I've turned the heads of a few notable news sources uh, quite around the world. And I, I am really, really confident in my training and everything leading up to this point. Mm -hmm. Thea, four years ago, you were in a similar position mm -hmm. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. This time around, you know, you're looking a bit, a lot more confident, mm -hmm. a lot more prepared. Mm -hmm. What are some of the reasons for that? Um, I switched coaches almost immediately after Rio. I just didn't feel like I was prepared. I, I didn't feel very strong. Honestly, I didn't feel elite. And I was lucky to have found Coach Aaron Gatson and his understanding and detail for the sport really helped set me apart um, when it comes to the triple jump world. And we've set up this amazing training situation for myself that's consistent and top-notch and um, I also have an amazing recovery personnel with me here at these games someone that knows me and someone that's helped me really make sure that my recovery post-practice and meets have been amazing <laughs> <laughs> okay so how has the road been from 2016 to mm -hmm. 2020 I mean a lot of Dominicans remember that you were an unqualified athlete yeah. in 2016 mm -hmm. now you're among the top 10 mm -hmm. in the world in 2020. Yeah. Mentally, you know, give me an idea so, to what sort of changes you made. Um, mentally, I think I had to get to a point where I believed that I was one of the best in the world. And I think that even when I started seeing success um, after changing coaches and changing ch training regiments, um, there was still a part of me that was still kind of questioning, well, you know, do I still kind of deserve to be on these larger stages? Um, do I have it in me to be one of the greats, one of the best at what I'm doing? And I think even this last COVID year gave me even more time to really acknowledge that I am in fact, you know, good at what I would do and that ranking is truth in that I am one of the best in the world at what I do. Um, and that's completely, completely different than five years ago at Rio um, where I just felt completely unprepared. Um, here I feel ready. In 2018, you participated in the Commonwealth Games, mm -hmm. made history, securing mm -hmm. a medal at that event for, for Dominica. Mm -hmm. What can you take from the Commonwealth Games as you're preparing for the Olympic Games this time around? Um, I think that the biggest thing is that we want to continue making history. Um, we went to the Commonwealth Games and I will never forget um, Brendan telling us that, you know, he thought that we could get two medals. And um, here, we, here we are, you know, two medals later. But I also took away from the Commonwealth Games was the drive to not be comfortable, you know, to get away from that. Because even though I got a medal, um, I wasn't too happy with how I jumped, actually. And neither was, was my coach, Aaron. Um, and so it became just another great, you know, platform for me to dive off of, um, to work harder and train for better things. And it also kind of alleviated a lot of nerves um, when you come to these bigger meets, bigger platforms, major events. Um, Sometimes you, ha you know, you get a little nervous, a little antsy, um, but the Commonwealth Games put me in a position to really enjoy the events, enjoy the competition, and do a good job. You mentioned your coach, Aaron, mm -hmm. also your physiotherapist, Risa Kala. Mm -hmm. What some of the other people have been instrumental in your rise over the past four years? Wow, I will first of all say the DOC. Um, they have been amazing support, both emo emotionally, financially, um, and just they truly went above and beyond to just care about me more than just an athlete, but also as a person. Um, many times, Brendan or Billy would just reach out just to check in on me. They were often one of the first people to congratulate me every time I PB'd. Um, and outside of that, I would also say my county where I work, I'm also a teacher. And they actually worked with me so I'd be able to train at my school or lift in, at my school and also um, create a schedule I'd be able to train after work also. Um, and I'm very, very thankful. And of course, my family, who have been a pivotal, pivotal role 
um, in making all this possible just by being one there and providing love, support, food um, when needed. And um, yeah, it, it really has taken a village to get to this point. And of course, Friday is the big day for you, yeah. Theola, for the first step, of mm -hmm. course, qualify for the finals and then let's see what happens there yeah. on feeling any pressure at this point in time? Um, I thought I would, but right now it's, it's, I'm looking at it as just a line of facts in that I am prepared. Today's practice was great. I was running well. My approach felt good. Uh, my body feels good. My jumping looks very good. Um, so all the pieces are there and Friday I just know that I have to put it together and hopefully I can do that on one jump and um, prepare for finals two days later. Okay. Thea, you're also playing the role of big sister here <laughs> on this uh, tour. You're mm -hmm. also mentoring our other athlete, Danik mm -hmm. Luke, um, mm -hmm. who's going to be representing Dominica in the 800 meter yeah. events. Um, a word on Danik. Um, you know, what sort of relationship you guys have? Uh, um, so I was told ahead of time that Danik was more reserved personality. Um, and I, I was fine with that. I have two little brothers, one of which is more of an extrovert, but they're both kind of introverted. Um, but I met Denik and we got along so well. I told him that I basically adopted him. He's a new little brother. I changed his name to Denik Luke Lafon. <laughs> um, and he's on, honestly just an amazing person through and through, amazing spirit, amazing personality. And I'm really excited for what he brings to the future of Dominica track and field. Um, he has an amazing pool of talent and he's just starting to tap into it. I mean, Everyone that encounters him has nothing but positive things to say, down to his Jamaican coaches. Um, and the man seems to, to me, do what I think is impossible, which is to actually like the 800. Um, and so I think it's easier to get far in your event when you actually truly enjoy it. And uh, Denik is definitely doing that. And I, I wish him all the best. Um, we've had a few conversations, nerves, talking about nerves and preparedness about the games. And he actually came up to me and thanked Thank me for actually being here and being able to talk to him and how he's happy that I'm his teammate and that really made made my day. Um, so all good things about Denik Luke. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thea. And of course, we wish you and Denik all the best as you head into the uh, respective events coming from Friday. Any final words for the Dominican public? Um, I hope to do you proud. Please, please support and tune in. And I'll hopefully see you in a few days with a flag overhead and a medal around my neck. All right. Thank you very much, Thea. Thanks for your time. Thanks.